Hi everybody. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to find the shortest distance between two skew lines. And the fact that they are skew means that the lines are not parallel and they'll never intersect. So I've illustrated the shortest distance here. And this is where the angle between the two lines is a right angle. So even though they're separated in space, they are perpendicular to each other at this the shortest distance. So I need to begin by calling this point P and this point Q. So what we're going to find is the magnitude of the vector P to Q. And that will be the shortest distance between these two skew lines. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to express P to Q using the general coordinates of line L1 and line L2. And we know that each of these are position vectors with respect to the origin. So we'll include the origin in our diagram. So we've got O to P and O to Q. So we can see that P to Q will be negative O to P plus O to Q. And we know O to Q will be the general point along this line given by this equation. So we've got 2 plus 0 mu minus 4 plus 3 mu and 0 plus 2 mu. We can do the same for O to P, where the general point is 1 minus lambda minus 1 plus 3 lambda and 2 plus 4 lambda. So to work out P to Q, we need to expand out this bracket. So our x coordinate will be 2 minus the 1 and plus the lambda. Our y coordinate will have a negative 4 plus the 1 and then 3 mu minus 3 lambda. And for the z coordinate we'll have 2 mu minus the 2 minus the 4 lambda. So this will be the 3D vector for P to Q in its general form. And the reason we found this is because this describes the direction from P to Q, and we know that this is at right angles at its shortest point. So the direction vector of P to Q, when dotted with a direction vector of a line L1, which is this, will get zero, because we'll have a cosine of 90. So we've got the direction vector of P to Q, dotted with a direction vector of a line, will equal the cos of 90, and then we can dot these two together and we'll have an equation involving mu and lambda. So we've got the 1 plus lambda times the negative 1, all of this times the positive 3, and all of this times the positive 4, and we're adding them together. And now we can collect the constant terms, the lambda terms, and the mu terms. So we get negative 18 minus 26 lambda plus the 17 mu is equal to zero. And we'll call this equation one. So then you can see we've got one equation involving two unknowns. We need a second equation involving both lambda and mu. But we can find that second equation because P to Q is also perpendicular to the direction vector of line L2. And again, when you dot them together, you'll get the cosine of 90, which is this angle here. So you'll get zero. So we've got the direction of P to Q dotted with the direction of line L2 will equal the cos of 90. When we dot these together, we'll get zero lots of one plus lambda, three lots of all of this, and two lots of all of this. Again, we'll collect our constant terms, our lambda terms, and our mu terms. So now we get this equation, and we'll call this equation two. So now to solve equation 1 and 2 simultaneously, I'm going to move the constants to the right hand side. So we've got equation 1 and equation 2. We can solve these on our calculators. We got lambda is negative 13 over 49 and mu is 32 over 49. And then we can substitute each of these into their respective equations. So at P, we'll substitute this value for lambda into here. And this will allow us to find the coordinates of point P. So we've substituted lambda into our equation. And then to work out our coordinates, we'll have 1 plus the lambda to give us our x value. 
for y we'll have negative 1 minus 3 lots of lambda and for our z point we'll have 2 minus 4 lots of lambda. So this will be our coordinates at p. To work out the coordinates at q, we'll substitute mu into here and we'll go through the same process to find the coordinates of this point. So we've substituted mu into our equation. We'll work out our x, y and z value. So this will be the coordinates of q. So we've got p and we've got q. Now we need to find the magnitude of this vector. So the magnitude of p to q will be the magnitude of o to q minus o to p, which we worked out over here. We'll use these points for o to q and these for o to p. So we've got o to q minus o to p will give us this direction vector for p to q. And to work out the magnitude of this, we'll Pythagorize these coordinates. So we've got the square of our i component, the square of our j, and the square of our k. We can work all of this out on a calculator, and we get the square root of 36 over 49. So the shortest distance will be 6 over 7. Okay? Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did find that helpful, please like and subscribe. And you can download the full lesson from my website, mrmathematics.com. I'll leave a link in the description below.